just to kind of echo a couple of the sentiments of Megan and Corey, um, I was also raised in a religious upbringing, kind of in the height of purity culture. So had internalized a lot of messages of shame regarding sexuality in my body. And I remember um, as soon as I found out what penetration was, just being terrified of that idea, the concept was really scary to me. <clears throat> um, I had ir irregular periods. So my mom ended up bringing me to our family doctor when I was 18 and she tried to do a pap smear and um, that did not work. I just was instantly crying and just had this extreme anxiety. Um, so I ended up in my vaginismus journey, I had three experiences with doctors that were all um, pretty traumatic. So she was very frustrated with me, um, really just had a response of anger and kind of was flippant. <clears throat> So after that experience, I just thought, well, I'm not doing that again. Like, <laughs> that's it for doctors, never again. Um, but a couple years later, my mom said, look, we really need to find somebody else. Let's go to an OBGYN. Uh, so I went to a gentleman who specialized in infertility issues. And he also attempted to do a physical exam. Um, <clears throat> and my mom was there. And he really just looked right at my mom and said, something about this is a fear response, you know, some people just have it kind of in their minds and it's fear, it's a fearful thing. Um, <clears throat> and I just felt like such a failure, you know, like, okay, it's a fear response. Why can't I just relax and breathe through it and be fine? You know, I kind of just knew something deeper was wrong, but I didn't know what that was. Um, so I had opened up to some friends of mine in college can you guys hear me okay? I just saw that note. Um, okay. I yeah. opened up to some friends of mine in college about my issue and nobody really had any issues like that. And I got a lot of recommendations like, well, you should just drink, just get really drunk, you know, and, and try to have sex. It'll be fine. Or, you know, maybe try different positions. Um, and, uh, you know, nothing, nothing worked. I, I tried all of those things. And um, I always just felt extreme, like searing pain whenever I would try for penetration. Um, and, and another thing was, you know, I, I heard a lot of messages of, oh, well, it's normal for sex to hurt at first. So you just have to push through it. Um, which made me feel even more like a failure, right? Because I thought, well, it's normal for women to have painful sex at first. Okay, so like, why can't I just push through it? Um, and every time I tried, I just sunk lower and lower and just felt so hopeless and so much despair. And really, um, I didn't feel like a woman, you know, I, I felt broken. So it was, it was just such a painful thing for me. Uh, I went to the internet and started Googling things like my vagina's broken and <laughs> I can't have sex. I came across all kinds of terms. So I did come across the term vaginismus, um, vulvar vestibulitis, vestibulodynia, vulvodynia. I just saw all these terms thrown around, but there really wasn't a lot of concrete information and, and certainly nothing concrete as far as treatment plans. So, so at that point in my life, I, I just was done. I just thought, okay, like my vagina is going to have caution tape around it. This is warning, do not enter. And I'm not going to think about it. <laughs> um, and a few years later, I ended up meeting someone who was quite a bit older than me. And um, he assured me that he would have no issues uh, with me if I couldn't have sex, um, you know, because my the vaginismus really um, affected my intimate relationships in general. Like I just wasn't interested in a relationship with someone because I didn't want to have to deal with the sex aspect of that. So, you know, this man assured me like, oh, I'll still love you. We don't have to have sex. So I did end up getting married. And about three years into my marriage, um, he actually found the Women's Therapy Center online for me and brought it to me. And we actually lived three hours away at the time. So he said, look, let's just go for a consultation. 
<clears throat> um, and at that point, I had been, um, you know, dealing with vaginismus for over 10 years. Um, also, the third doctor I went to, I forgot to mention, had me do surgery because she said that I had a microperforate hymen. So they went in and even surgically removed my hymenal tissue, thinking that would work, um, and that didn't work either. So I uh, totally remember going to the Women's Therapy Center thinking like, I can't believe I'm doing this. Nobody understands my vagina is the vagina that can't be fixed. Like nobody is getting in there. It's impenetrable. This is a waste of time. And it's just gonna like further affect me emotionally. But I went anyways <clears throat> and uh, met with the doctors and they gave me a copy of their book, A Private Pain. And I read that for the entire three hour drive home and wept. Um, you know, like I can still remember that feeling so well, just hearing story after story of women who were sharing um, experiences that I had had that I just thought I was completely alone in. And so it gave me such a sense of hope. <clears throat> and so I decided, okay, you know, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna commit to it. Um, and going through treatment was just the most liberating experience um, and the most rewarding experience of my life. Um, it taught me three different things. They taught me that like, one, I was not crazy and I wasn't alone. Um, two, that there was an actual cure to this condition and that I didn't have to experience a lifetime of dilator kits and pelvic floor exercises and Botox and more surgeries and all these things that I had found online um, and that my body was normal and I was not broken. So um, I went through the treatment program and coming out of the other end of that, I, I was actually amazed to how quickly I was able to progress in my treatment, how quickly I was able to have penetration when I just thought, well, okay, if this works, it's going to be like six months from now, you know? Um, so it was just wonderful. The doctors just take such a holistic approach to this condition and have so many years of experience. That they really just can tailor it to fit where you're at and what you need and what your body needs. Um, and it also allowed me and empowered me to confront a lot of issues that I had had from over a decade of, of dealing with this condition. You know, I had a lot of emotional kind of baggage and trauma. And I also had been in a marriage that was really unhealthy and really toxic. And it empowered me to take the steps I needed from a place of wholeness um, and from a place of healing to make good changes in my life. Um, so I will forever be grateful about that. Um, and so I just want to kind of encourage anybody on here who's can, can kind of connect to the stories you heard that there really is hope, um, and that you are so deserving of feeling whole in your body. For me, I didn't go because I wanted to have sex. Like that wasn't, <laughs> I was like, I don't, I don't want that. Um, my reason for going was because I just didn't want to feel fear of my body. Like I didn't want that to control me. I, I wanted to be whole and I wanted to be able to connect with my womanhood and my sense of identity. So it was really important for me. Um, and the last thing is like, I was thrilled to get a pap smear after this program. I, mean, I like hopped up on that table, the first doctor I went to after I was cured and I was like, yes, I get a pap smear. And the doctor looked at me a little funny cause I don't think she'd ever experienced that before. <laughs> um, but it was, it was such a, a relief of anxiety too, just to be able to take care of my own health, my physical health and um, be able to have those routine checks that are important. So it's awesome. And I've become a total vaginismus missionary to every doctor that I go to. They have to listen to a mini lecture on the condition and what it is and my experience and where people can go. Um, so yeah, that's my story. <laughs>